meet Braca. Uh, I had already been playing with him. He already got some fur and uh, UV textures and vertex color layers as well. So let's remove all that. No cheating here. Let's start from scratch. Remove all the materials. Leave all these really simple settings there. Okay, render. Okay, maybe we could use as a gray material. So let's render. Let's render fast with the border rendering with GIF B. We draw a rectangle and that will be rendered. Yeah, I think it's okay. I'll just remove the compositing. And to remove the this border render, just draw a rectangle, draw anything outside of the of the view, of the camera view. And okay, we are ready to start. We'll select our mesh, go to the object buttons, F7, and then add a, on the particle settings, add a new particle system. No panels there, add a new, bam, like six panels, Jesus, yeah, um, okay, by default it's on emitter, so now mesh are now is uh, emitting particles, so if you play back now, if you go to timeline or, or press alt A as well, you can see that our mesh is uh, emitting particles, but since it doesn't have a velocity, the particles stay in place. Anyways, we don't want that. We want to change it to hair, actually. But now also our our particles, our hair, is on the mesh. Actually, it's stick to the mesh. Blender now has 1,000 particles all around our object, but since it doesn't have any initial velocity, Blender doesn't know where to point these particles to. So we have to tell them, okay, with the normal slider, okay, Blender push my hair out of the faces along the normal, the direction of my faces. So that makes more sense. Now we have a bunch of particles all over our mesh. We can have as many as, as we want. But still, we don't want hair on the eyes, for example, or in the on the beak. That's just weird. Well, maybe not for another character, but for Braca it is. So let's uh, let's set where we want hair and where we don't want hair. So we do that on the extra panel on the vertex group, all the way to the bottom. There we can select um, a vertex group to tell Blender where we want particles, where we want the density of these particles to be. So if we paint our vertex group there. Whatever is red is going to be hairy, or it's going to have particles on it, and whatever is blue won't have uh, any particles on them. So, back to our particles. Now we have uh, enough hair. We have we we have it where we want it, but still, if we render now. What the? Yeah, the, our mesh is, is, is in there actually. I think that's an option that should be enabled by default. It is called emitter. It's on the visualization panel under render. And you have to enable emitter every time you want to uh, Blender to render the emitter mesh. Um, which is all, which is really often actually. <laughs> So you, you don't have to forget about enable that, enabling that. So now that we render, no matter how much, how far we go with the amount of particles, well, if we push it really high, then yeah. But we'll leave it on 1000 because we don't want more patent particles. Those are the patent particles. Now we want some automatic growing of particles out of the ones we already have and uh, I will tell you why later. So for that we go to the children uh, panels and then add a children from the faces. 
we could either select faces or particles, but uh, uh, in this case it's better uh, faces instead of growing each children from uh, each particle. So there are two numbers there. One is uh, amount and the other one is render amount, which uh, for example now that I have in both in 20, I have 20 children particles per pattern particle. So on the particle system panel we have amount 1000 so it's it means that we have 1000 particles and we have every one particle we have 20 children following this particle. So uh, we'll see now why it's better to have one of the reasons actually there are many reasons but one of the reasons why it's better to keep it simple and with low amount of uh, pattern particles and do the rest with children's is because when we have to edit this hair which doesn't look good at all now we want to comb it and make it nice and edit it we don't want to edit 50,000 particles right we just want a few of them and the rest will do automatically will follow so for that we enable set editable from the particle uh, system panel and now we have a particle mode uh, mode in uh, our where we can change from object mode to edit mode from that menu now we have particle mode and as you can see now we have a brush which if we click and drag we are, uh, we are already combing our hair there but not only combing if you press N you get this particle edit properties panel which you can smooth your hair, you can't, uh, for example, add more hair, for example, for example there. The hotkeys for this are F for the size and Shift F for the strength. Exactly the same as for uh, sculpting. Or you can grow even. You can uh, like extend these particles make it longer, change the length of it. If you hold shift, you will make them shorter. You will shrink these particles. That's nice. And you can, uh, the puff tool is a really one one, puff. <laughs> it's a really good one, really fun. There is also cut in case you want to cut your particles. For example, there are too many hairs there. It will cut straight from the view. There. So whatever is on the other side, it will not be cut. For example, you can cut you can cut all that, which yeah doesn't look that good. So control Z to undo or control Z. ugly haircut so as you can see now we are not combing all the particles there are some of them black and some of them uh, well my my color theme which is a little bit of <laughs> a little bit pink ish and that's uh, because we have uh, show children button enabled on the on the panel on the particle edit properties panel the n key panel so where we are actually combing are only the parent particles and the children particles are just following our parent particles so that's really good actually because you don't want to to be to comb every single hair manually there right will be a pain but well, it is actually a pain when you have many particle systems there, but it this makes it uh, a lot more easy to tweak. If you if you want to go a little bit further in editing hair, you can you can edit hair by hair actually. If you change the selection mode from edge or particle whole particle actually to a point selection mode mode, you can select 
every little key there for every hair so imagine if you had to do this with the children's jeez so as you can see we have a bunch of points for every particle these points are the segments actually we set on the on the particle system panel by default is five And also, each particle has a resolution, which is actually called steps here. On the visualization panel, you can change the steps, the amount of steps, either for the 3D view or for the render. Which, of course, uh, if you push it really far, the computer will ask you to stop. And uh, But it's nice. It's nice to have it on the 3D view as well. It's very nice. For example, if you do mustaches, uh, yeah, you can you can uh, go really far with the steps. Actually. Another great thing of this is that you can edit particle by particle and delete some of these points manually. If you select each of these points, press X or delete. Uh, you can select either to delete the, only the key or the whole particle as well, which is really nice. You have a lot of control on this system. I, I love it. By default, Blender keeps the length of each particle to the to the amount we left on the, we we set when we started actually before um, messing with the particles itself. You can disable that, and you can also disable blender to keep the the root to the to where the each particle is born from the particle edit properties you can also change the deflect uh, emitter value which avoids the particles to intersect with the mesh itself inside there so as you can see you have a lot of uh, really a lot of control to play with the particles here So now we have our character ready, I think. Yeah, we could move out just to, to start with the shading, I think. 